I'm here to talk to you about the outliers. This is a book about outliers, about men and women who do things that are out of the ordinary. Over the course of the chapters ahead, I'm going to introduce you to one kind of outlier after another. To geniuses, business tycoons, rock stars, and software programmers. We're going to uncover the secrets of a remarkable lawyer. Look at what separates the very best pilots from pilots who have crashed planes, and try to figure out why Asians are so good at math. And then examining the lives of the remarkable among us, the skilled, the talented, and the driven. I will argue that there is something profoundly wrong with the way we make sense of success. What is the question we always ask about the successful? We want to know what they're like, what kinds of personalities they have, or how intelligent they are, or what kind of lifestyles they have, or what special talents they might have been born with. And we assume that it is those personal qualities that explain how the individual reaches the top. In the autobiographies published every year by the billionaire, entrepreneur, rock star celebrity, the storyline is always the same. Our hero is born in modest circumstances and by virtue of his own grit and talent, fights his way to greatness. In the Bible, Joseph is cast out by his brothers and sold into slavery and then rises to become the Pharaoh's right-hand man on the strength of his own brilliance and insight. In the famous 19th century novels of Horatio Alger, young boys born into poverty rise to riches through a combination of pluck and initiative. Lift up your heads, Robert Winthrop told the crowd many years ago at the unveiling of a statue of that great hero of American independence, Benjamin Franklin. And look at the image of a man who rose from nothing, who owed nothing to parentage or patronage, who enjoyed no advantages of early education which are not open, a hundredfold open, to yourselves, who performed the most menial services in the businesses in which his early life was employed, but who lived to stand before kings and died to leave a name which the world will never forget. And outliers, I want to convince you that these kinds of personal explanations of success don't work. People don't rise from nothing. We do owe something to parentage and patronage. The people who stand before kings may look like they did it all by themselves, but in fact, they are invariably the beneficiaries of hidden advantages and extraordinary opportunities and cultural legacies that allow them to learn and work hard and make sense of the world in ways others cannot. It makes a difference where and when we grew up. The culture we belong to and the legacies passed down by our forebearers shape the patterns of our achievement in ways we cannot begin to imagine. It's not enough to ask what successful people are like, in other words. It is only by asking where they are from that we can unravel the logic behind who succeeds and who doesn't.